The third issue begins, where we see Hellstorm using his flames to create the air currents needed to keep the airborne zombie virus at bay, preventing the team from becoming immediately infected. Completely overwhelmed and defeated that his vaccine had caused this evolution, Morbius stood helpless as he pondered just what to do next. Not about to stick around and turn into a rotted spleen slurper, the hood said sayonara and went to teleport away with his magic, only to discover that, as with most horror movie cliches, his magic was now gone. Not needing magic to bust the cap into some fool, Hood then whipped out two guns and began firing upon the monstrous werewolf by night, only for them to have no effect as the bullets were not made of silver. With the wolfman taking the mob boss out of commission, he asked his master Dormammu just why he abandoned him. We would see why in the very next panel, as the demon would show how much of an unloyal sleaze he was by visiting Jennifer Kale, who proposed to add his magic to her own, making her unstoppable against the undead forces. With the Dark Lord preying on Jen's fear of the zombies from her previous encounters, the woman proved she was as wise as she was powerful, for she downright refused, as the teachings of her masters warned all sorcerers to refuse any offerings from Dormammu and she would rather have her flesh destroyed by the undead than have her soul doomed for eternity. Breaking out a secret vial within her uniform, we then see a seed fall into the ground, where a giant plant began to take root. The vegetation then took on a humanoid form, which was the legendary and mysterious Man-Thing, now armed to fight at Jennifer's side. Impressed at her quick thinking of summoning such a creature to combat him, Dormammu told Kale that this would be of no use as this was merely his astral form, for his physical body was mystically barred from ever visiting this dimension. Not taking any chances with even that, Jen used the ward of Malak to send the dude back to hell from whence he came. As he vanished, Dormammu, in admiration of the woman's resolve, told her that if she ever had a change of heart for his offer, all she would have to do is call his name. As the sun rose, Werewolf by Night would revert back to his human form of Jack Russell, being extremely sore and asking just what the heck had happened since their excursion on the cruise ship. Looking below, he would see the wounded Hood and ask just who in the world this guy was, where Hood cursed the man out, where he responded back by saying that just because he wasn't a werewolf anymore, this would not stop him from feeding the man his teeth if he kept running his mouth. God, this team is so dysfunctional that I love them so much. A very worried Hellstorm would then tell Morbius that the air current he created kept the zombie cloud from infecting them, but now it had changed directions and was headed toward the coast where all the island resorts and local villages were leaving thousands of innocents at the mercy of the undead virus. With none of them immune, they wondered just what to do. That is, until Jennifer introduced them to Man-Thing, who was indeed immune, due to him being made out of vegetables, and said that he could be their potential weapon in stopping this. We are then taken to the Taino villages, where we see the locals running in fear of the sight of zombie Deadpool and Simon, who had made their way there after escaping Black Talon's custody. Telling the people they had no reason to fear, Deadpool tried getting one of the local women to sing with him, where things suddenly took an extremely dark turn. Looming in the skies above them was the virus-riddled gas from before, which had now formed into a full-on storm cloud. As the sky darkened, viral rain began to fall to the ground below, instantly infecting those it came into contact with, resulting in a blooded catastrophe as they all began to turn and feed on each other. Unaffected by the storm as they were already zombies, we see actual sadness from this Deadpool for the very first time as all he wanted was peace, and no matter where he went, 
all that seemed to follow was death and destruction. He was then interrupted mid-sentence by the Man-Thing, who had traveled into the storm to investigate, where the mercenary exclaimed that he smelled like the devil puked on him. Things then cut back to Black Talon's plantation, where he ordered his army of voodoo zombies to defend him from his coming attackers. These attackers, being Morbius and the Midnight Suns, who sought shelter within his manor so they could escape the infected clouds before the wind shifted again. Making quick work of the guy's undead cronies, the heroes confronted the shaman, who talked a big game and summoned some kind of serious looking magic spell, only to get knocked out in one punch to the face from Hood. Honestly, once this guy got depowered, he got so much cooler. With Morbius asking just why he took their side, Hood responded by saying that Talon was essentially an idiot, and that Morbius and his gang actually seem like they know what they're doing. Using her magic to see what Man-Thing was seeing, Jennifer was disturbed at the amount of gore and devastation that this infected storm had created in such a short amount of time. Looking further into things, she discovered that despite being immune to the virus, the Man-Thing was still weakened by the pouring rain, for he was replenished by the life of Earth itself, and wherever this storm touched, there was nothing but death. Not taking any chances of having this blood rain touch them, Morbius ordered Jack to check the manor for leaks, where he happily agreed to help, but as he walked away, began to mysteriously cough. Before Michael could even begin to think of a plan, he was contacted by the Director of Armor, asking just what was going on, for the readings were going off the charts where they picked up the huge spike of viral activity rapidly spreading across the island. In a caring but very direct way, the man told Morbius that if he did not think of a plan soon, they would be forced to launch an orbital nuclear strike, which would destroy the entire nation. We then cut back to our favorite undead zombie couple, Deadpool and Simon, where they soon made their way to one of the island resorts, where they were halted by another group of sealess supers who acted as security. Telling the poor little noggin man that they were there to help him, Deadpool asked if he could have a drink, where the storm would make its way to this hotel as well, tearing the poor supers to pieces. Still being pursued by the Man-Thing, Deadpool believed it was him that was causing this madness and was keeping him from finding happiness. Through some slight mental suggestion from Simon, Wade finally said that enough was enough and was through being pushed around. Given strength from the storm, the pair then took a page from Dragon Ball Z and Resident Evil's book where they began to fuse and absorb the strength from the others taken by the rain, transforming them into a powerful tyrant type being. Even having some of the powers from the poor dudes just absorbed into the cloud, the Deadpool Simon hybrid began to viciously attack the man thing, much to the surprise and horror of Jennifer, who watched on. As he fought against Deadpool, the man thing was still rapidly weakened by the pouring rain and could just barely keep his body together. Gaining the upper hand, Deadpool rose the being off the ground and tore him to pieces. The man thing completely destroyed. Overcome by emotion, Jennifer blamed Morbius for this, for if it weren't for his faulty vaccine, things would not be as bad as they are now. While she was completely right, she did apologize to the poor man, where she said that she just needed some time alone. Looking on at the rain from hell, Jen was soon comforted by the voice of Jack, who asked if everything was alright. Glad to hear from her ally, Jen would soon see that things were far from alright with him, as Russell had been transformed into an infected himself as a result of the vaccine that they were all injected with prior to the mission. Oh yeah, I kind of forgot to mention that prior to this whole ride to hell, Morbius had injected them all with a vaccine that would help them from becoming infected, 
But uh, there was kind of a 10% chance that any of them could turn from this vaccine, as it did have a live culture of the virus itself. Fun, right? Uh, go science? Wanting a piece of those sweet sorceress meat cheeks, Jack went to feed on Jen, where out of pure desperation, she called upon the name that she swore she never would, and that would be the name of Dormammu. As the infected villagers closed upon the mansion, Hood urged Morbius to do something before they were totally screwed. Being at his absolute wit's end, Morbius officially gave up. Calling into armor, he requested extract for he and his team before the nuclear launch would commence, leaving thousands to peril at the hands of the government. Before he could go full-on vampire Oppenheimer, Morbius' request was soon cut short by a voice who said that it had a better idea. This voice belonged to that of Jennifer, now fully possessed by Dormammu, who said that she now had the power she needed to seize control of this infected mist and make the world inhabitable for her dark master. <laughs> 